Dag de Eve, August Balch. Yeah. Hi, hello, and welcome. John O'Sullivan, the Irish Pagan School, and we are here with this week's check in chat and coffee talk. So, <clears throat> I'm thinking about the topic today. It's been pondering around in my mind for a bit of time the concept of being a resolute pagan uh, in this time of New Year's and resolutions. Um, but before we do that, I would like to invite you to pop along down to our links below and pick up a free resource, which is the redesigned Three Pillars of Paganism um, by my partner, Laura O'Brien. It is a great resource. It gets you onto the main list to connect with us and to be connected with all of the great resources we give out over the year um, and more, <laughs> um, which can help you kind of grow your paganism and figure out where you need to be targeting your growth for yourself and the betterment of you. Um, and so that's really where my mindset has been. I did a piece recently enough about um, New Year's and being pagan at New Year and whether or not like one can be pagan at New Year. And what should one be doing <laughs> at paganism if you acknowledge Samhain as the end of, the, say, the pagan year in Ireland? What happens in this mid-December kind of stuff then? Um, and so what follows then, of course, is you know the start of a new year. And we have a lot of people thinking and talking about resolutions, this new year resolution. And. Of course, you know, oh, I'm going to give up this. I'm going to take on that. I'm going to go to the gym more. I'm going to. And we try and set ourselves these goals and we don't always meet those goals. Sometimes we do. Sometimes it's great. And sometimes, you know, things get in the way and things then slip. And next thing you know, we're just demotivated and not making the changes we could do. And so the concept came to me and like this, this is where my brain has been of applying some kind of process or resolution to myself or for myself as a pagan. And I won't mention the other New Year's resolutions. This is kind of what I will share on this one. Um, but the thing that is coming, I'm coming back to is the idea of habits. And when we talk about, say, going to the gym or getting fit or getting healthy, if we don't define things in a very granular and specific way, then it remains ephemeral. It remains loosey-goosey and it remains easy to skip out on or not do or tell us that we have fulfilled when you know we really aren't meeting some form of measurable kind of change or success or growth and so the thing that really kind of has helped me with this is a book a book recommendation that i'm going to slip into this video and this recording um for you and it is called atomic habits by james clear and so this is recommended to me by my partner laura who you know, has listened to this multiple times and, you know, on audiobook. And I actually picked up the audiobook version of it myself because I found that easier when I'm going on my walks, which is part of my resolution and part of this investment in myself that I want to do for my physical well being. But as with a lot of these things, not one part of it is dealt with in and of itself alone. You know, it is all interconnected. It is all kind of interwoven with the other aspects of our life and what we want to be doing. And so the Atomic Habits book has really helped me kind of explain things down and define for myself the concept of change and creating a habit of change or a habit of growth. And what it really linchpin moment to bring it to this resolute pagan, this concept of a resolute pagan is not just a, a resolution or a commitment or some kind of idea about, no, oh, well, I think I'm going to observe the moon cycles more this year, or I think I'm going to make more offerings on a regular basis this year, or I'm going to go to more spiritual places this year. You know, those are goals. Those are ideas. Those are aspirations. But unless you kind of make them very specific, it's like, okay, well, you know, on this day that I go into my calendar and mark when all the full moons are, when all the dark moons are, have I gone in for the rest of the year and marked when all the solstices are, when all the equinoxes are? Do I know in advance where these things are or have I just set myself some, oh, I, I think I'll just on it. It's like, if you're not tracking it, if you're not measuring it, it's not specific enough because it's not realistic and it's not achievable. Well, so when we get to this concept, and this is the other form of goals, making it a smart goal, which is specific, measurably, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely, a smart goal is something that can be measured, can be kind of seen, and then can be met. And so by making those goals and coupling that with a habit, you're able to kind of double down on building a sustainable process for being whatever you want to be. And that's really where one of the elements of the book that really struck me was, it's not about defining a change that is going to create the habit. It's defining a who that will actually keep you doing the habit. So if I define, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm going to walk more, then, you know, 
is that enough of a motivation on those days when it's raining outside or those days when it's early or those days when you like you're not feeling well probably not but if the definition and the way you phrase it is i want to be the kind of person who walks five times a week for at least 20 minutes suddenly it's specific because it's timely it's five times a week you're okay you know you might say at noon five times a week or for at least 20 minutes it's something that can be measured can be tracked for its specific nature but also the first part i want to be the person who it's no longer i want to just have this in my life i want to just like it, it's i want to be this the person I want to become, the the future version of myself, which I'm defining as the best version of myself, needs to be this. And so that's where this concept comes from. And that's where I'm trying to find a way to apply it for myself as a resolute pagan. So it's not just make a resolution to, you know, make more offerings on the dagged altar or to light candles on the dagged altar or to, you know, go and visit, like you know, spaces around Ireland connected with our history and mythology and spirituality. You know, those are ideas. Those are, you know, concepts of how I could do it. But being the kind of person who does that is a very different mindset altogether. And that's where this resolution isn't just about something we want it's or something that we feel we should do because that's the other side of it as well you know we hit the start of a year and everyone's making resolutions oh i should give up you know drinking or i should give up smoking or i should give up this or you know uh, there's a whole lot of should and pressure and burden from those around us and expectation whether it's vocalized or not like you know sometimes people just you know it, for the best of their will for us they still don't just get it they don't understand where we are specifically so how can they you know suggest things that would be better for us because they don't fully know us but when we kind of get to that point for ourselves when we're able to define who i want to be tomorrow and it doesn't have to be who i want to be this time next year it doesn't have to be do who i want to be you know three months from now five months from now it could be who i want to be tomorrow well, tomorrow I want to be the kind of person who goes for a walk. And so tomorrow at noon, I'm going to take 20 minutes and go for a walk. And so that's a B. That is something that, like, you know, isn't just aspirational anymore. It's something very realistic and very achievable. Over the time frame, then, as soon as I am identifying myself more with that person I want to be, the actions I have created become more easily repeatable the kind of person who goes for a walk and so every day well i'm the kind of person and that's where it shifts you change from being i want to be the kind of person to i am the kind of person and so i don't want to be a kind of per a person who engages with the dagda every day or engages with the dagda once a month or i am the kind of person who says the dagda's name out loud every day even if it's just for myself when i'm making my coffee at the start of the day in the kitchen alone or maybe with the cats or whoever happens to be there you know, I am the kind of person who engages with a moment of spiritual connection for my own well-being, regardless of anyone's observance of it or not. It's me for mine, too, because it instills in me a sense of serenity, a sense of peace, a sense of fulfillment, because that's being what I choose to be. And that's the concept for me of this idea of a resolute pagan, because let's be fair, folks, there's a lot of shit out there. There really, really is. And as co-founder of the Irish Pagan School, it surprises me how much shit my partner gets compared to how much I get. And it frustrates me. It really, really does. You know, is it down to perceived gender? Is it down to age? Is it down to like, like, it is so annoying when people pop onto videos, which may be talking on a similar theme, maybe book recommendations on a similar process, but Laura's videos get, you know, hate and slam and like, you know, oh, well, you'd be better if you smiled more and all this toxic patriarchal hate bullshit or all this entitled spiritual kind of kerfuffle. Whereas I don't really get that. It doesn't happen with me. And I joke about it. Like, you know, it's that age old Simpsons quote. I'm a middle aged white man. Everyone listens to me, which is unfortunately true. And so it's where the the way things are built at the moment, the way they shouldn't be built. 
And so that's where I will use my voice wherever possible to advocate for those who need to be advocated for. If people are going to listen to me, they're going to hear words of compassion. They're going to be hearing me work talking against patriarchal kind of toxicity. They're going to hear me talking against racism, against transphobia, against any form of hate, because that doesn't take us where we want to be as people. That doesn't take us where we want to be as a species or as, as a collective, regardless of how big you want to go, even as a street, as a neighborhood, as a friendship or a family. Hate doesn't get us where we want to be. So it is about, you know, being as vocal as we can about what we choose to be for ourselves and then how that supports those we choose to have around us because we get to choose. And so, yeah, it, it grinds it grinds us both down. It grinds us all down here when we get a whole lot of hate targeted at the Irish Pagan School. And it does happen. You know, and it's not that we're not aware of it. <laughs> yes, it is the wilds of the internet. It is a broad place, but we hear when people are talking about talking shit about us, and it's annoying, and it's frustrating, and it's hurtful. It really, really it does kind of get to us. But then both either Laura or me remind the other person that that is a, a percentage of voices out there, and not a very large percentage. There's a lot more people who are experiencing positive change from our teachings, are experiencing growth for themselves and, you know, finding their own path, taking the tools that they're learning and going and doing what they need to do to be the person that they want to be for themselves, for their connection with spirituality, for their connection with deity, for their connection with community, whatever absolutely it is, whatever they're choosing to be. And we want to support and empower that every which way we can, as ethically as possible. <laughs> so... Being a resolute pagan for me is reminding myself of those positive voices, those positive experiences, but then also reminding myself that regardless of external opinions, external like evaluations of me, it makes me feel better for me. Taking spiritual moments, taking a moment for peace, even if it's stirring a coffee to place on an altar. Those walks I'm taking out where I'm listening to my audio books for self-improvement. Huh, look, I'm walking past a whole lot of trees. My pathway invariably stake, takes me away from noisy roads and traffic into green areas and trees because that's where I feel comfortable. That's where I feel engaged and relaxed. And so suddenly I'm observing a, a, a connection and a bond with nature, which is part of a being a pagan, part of pagan practice and part of, part of living that spiritual nature connectedness that is an element of what we define paganism as and so i think to wrap things off i would definitely of course invite you to go pick up the free resources we have available with the irish pagan school irishpagan.school forward slash free or irishpagan.school forward slash um roots or forward slash checklist or forward slash three days there's a whole lot of free resources that we have available that can take you further in your own growth. But whatever way you choose to grow, acknowledge the fact that it is your choice. You are empowered in that choice. You are responsible in that choice. But define it as not what you want to have or what you should be doing. Define it as who you want to be. Because that, more than anything, from my own personal experience, will help you get to the point where, even on the tough days, you know who you want to be. And that will help you drive your actions. That will help you live a life like a resolute pagan. So I will say thank you very much for being with me for this chat. Look after yourself. Take care. Pop on down, listen to another episode or like, you know, join us on the mailing list to pick up more of this kind of stuff. But whatever way you choose to do it, just choose to look after yourself, to love yourself and to, you know, enjoy this crazy thing that is life. Till next time, look after yourself and goodbye. Sloan.